Observer feed is as easy as one, two, three. One is feet, two would be platform, and three is going to be rhythm and control. Okay, so first thing I said was feet. And feet are kind of the foundation of what a good service feed passer needs. Um, and we got to teach the basics of how to move, but not just how to move, how to move and track the ball. So question number one is how do we track serves? And we have to understand the different types of serves. And for this, I just created three pretty simple names. So the first one we talk about is going to be kind of a loop serve. So a loop serve goes up and down. Um, they're usually served in deep corners and short in front of passer. A flat serve, which is usually a jump float, although you do see a lot of standing float serves serving these sometimes as well. They're kind of served at the, the server's chest. They're really hard and they're really fast, and they really don't have what looks to be an upward or downward motion. They just come at you. As a result, these serves actually do tend to drop or rise at the last second, and you don't really have a warning on it. These are designed to have speed, and their goal is to beat the platform. And then the third one would be what we'd call a spin serve. Obviously, most people see a jump spin serve. They have one-handed toss high, they approach and snap it. And these serves are usually designed to be really hard. They have a heavy top spin, which usually causes them to drop. Now we gotta understand how we actually get our feet and track those different types of serves. And this is the basis of what a good serve receiver's footwork should be. It should be a surrounding the types of serve they're passing. The loop serve, like I said, is up and down, and you have to kind of keep your feet moving in, until contact. Because a good loop serve will keep going into the deep corner, it'll also drop right in front of you. You as a passer have to fight to find the bottom of the ball with your eyes, and we gotta try to stay lower to the ground. You don't need to stand up and run through the ball. Stay low while you're moving. Okay, you find the peak of the serve. So while you're looking at the bottom, you've got to do try to track the peak of the serve and figure out where it's going to come down, and you get your feet underneath the ball like an outfielder. Ideally, with a good shuffle motion, not as much a stand and run motion. The second one would be a flat serve. So a flat serve is coming at your chest pretty hard. Right, and your goal is to keep your shoulders and your chest down in front of you. You don't want to stand up. You don't want to straighten out your back. You've got to stay flat on that ball. Your goal is to keep the ball basically in your belt line and keep your platform in front of you. Don't let the ball get beat you to the side. And then you've got to stay calm with your upper body because these serves tend to dance all over the place. Calm upper body allows you to pass that ball. Third type of serve is the spin serve. And so while we're moving our feet, we've got to track the bottom of the ball and keep our head underneath the ball. As the spin serve is coming, the ball is going to drop on top of you. The goal is to keep your head underneath it, right? Find the bottom, keep your head under it. <clears throat> Think about dropping your hips underneath the ball. You're going to have to get lower than the ball. And then obviously you're going to have to angle your platform quickly. It's going to have to be angled upwards and away from your body, right? And we know the ball will drop and have heat. So you're often going to have to move your feet underneath the ball and then usually play it further to the ground. Question number two is where should we be contacting the ball? So I talk a lot about the belt line. So we talked about our server feed passers working to get the ball in the middle of my body around your belt line. So if the ball were to hit you, it's going to hit you in your belt loop. You can see in this nice little picture right here, he's got a beautiful platform away from his body, his belt line. That ball is on a downward trajectory, and if it's going to hit him, it's going to hit him about where the belt line is, right? We also talk a lot about our athletes getting the ball in the middle of our body. So we call about midline. I'm not a midline passer. I don't like that term. Right? But the goal is to pass the ball hopefully inside of your middle of your body. Okay? I don't like it directly in the center. I do like kind of a little bit off to the side. So you can see he's got a really nice wide base. He's passing the ball in the middle of his body, a little bit off to what looks like his right side. So the further you pass the ball outside of the body, the more you have to create really good angles. I do believe you can still pass the ball if you don't get your feet to it, but you just have to have a really solid angle. So the goal when you're talking about passer is to get in the middle, you can control it. If it's outside, you've got to really formulate the angles well. So question number three, does the side of the court matter? It absolutely does. Uh, we want, our goal is to get the ball, like I said, in the middle of our body, but on our outside hip. So it's going to hit me on hopefully my right leg or my left leg based off the side of the court I am on. So if you look at this, Nicole Davis is moving to her right side and she is passing the ball what looks like on her right hip. It allows her to drop a really solid angle and pass the ball to the target. On the opposite side, you see Logan Tom passing the ball on her left hip. Still in the middle, the ball still looks like it would hit her relatively on her belt line, right? But she's passing it on the left side of her body. The next section, creating your platform. Um, and basically, a good platform can really correct any problems found with your feet. So you, by simply creating a solid held angle, the passer 
uh, allows the ball to rebound, hopefully in the direction they want. And then by doing so, the, ball, the passer can manipulate the ball's direction through their platform. So you can see here, you create the platform through your shoulders. So your shoulders are the basis of your platform angles, and then your platform should be steady. So if we look at some pictures, here's some beautiful pictures. His shoulders are forward. Hopefully they're angled to the right, to the right direction, right? But his platform is in steady. So plat passing angle should be created through your shoulders before your platform comes together. The side of the court you're on, you drop the shoulders to face the target before service contact, and then you push your arms away from your body. Once you've gotten your feet set, then your platform meets the ball by surrounding it and hopefully angling it to the target, and then you hold. The harder the serve comes at you, the lower you've got to play the ball to the ground, and the more you need to angle your platform upwards. Because if you angle it flat, it tends to bounce off of your platform and go over the net. And that's usually done by float serves or even really heavy topspin serves. The loopier serves, which are uh, the little bit deeper and shorter serves, the more you can angle your platform forward and kind of push the ball up to the target because these balls aren't going to be quite as hard. So you've got to actually tuck the ball up to the target. This is how you teach the platform and we call it rebounding. So rebounding is a type of passing. Hopefully it limits the amount of movement during contact. So we don't really care about the pass. We just care about your platform not moving, right? So the first round, passers are asked to create their angles before contact. So you don't actually move, you create your angles. Even if we do it wrong, your angle should be created, right? Then the passers are asked to not move and basically let the ball hit them. So once you've moved, your, your angles have been created, you move your feet, then the ball hits you, okay? If the ball is directed the right way, we know it was a good pass. If the ball, it, direct, it basically shanked off the wrong way, we know it was a, a bad angle pass, okay? And usually these balls don't have a ton of energy, so they're not really good passes. We're not worried about whether or not the ball is going to the target, right, all the way to the target. We're worried more about whether or not the ball is directed the right way. The last part of it is what I classify as rhythm. It's basically the premise of how to give the ball power and how to take power away from the ball. So what does rhythm have to do with passing? And I said everything. Great passers have a great understanding of the ball and its rhythm. It looks really natural. It looks really effortless. Okay. So once the angle has been set, the passer must give the ball energy to push it to the target or you've got to take away energy, like on a heavy top spin, and keep the ball from going over the net. So how do we understand the ball? There's multiple different moves and patterns to do it. The first one is like a down-up. So a down-up, move your body from a lower posture to an upper posture, but at the same time, you keep your platform steady. You see these really, you do this a lot on short serves. So really when the serve is short, it's a drop type of a serve. You've got to get under your feet underneath the ball, and then you've got to lift the ball up to the target because the drop serve doesn't have a ton of energy. And here's a nice little USA Volleyball clip. It goes down to up. The second one I classify is a back to forward. So you start with all your energy on your back foot or weighted back, and then as the ball comes, you push forward through to the contact. You do this usually on a really good flat float serve that's deep on you, right? You can also do this on a loop serve sometimes that's deep into the corner. And there's kind of a really simple drawing of it, back to forward. And then the last round would be like an up to down motion. Up to down, you're basically going to hold your platform steady and you're going to drop your hips under the ball on contact, maybe even as low to the ground. So you basically, the goal is to slow the energy down, right, control the ball. And this is done a lot of times with the jump spin serve. Serve receive is as easy as one, two, three.